Okay, so welcome everybody to the 302 lecture. And I will start by sharing my screen first. So let me try to do that. Okay, I'll go to... Okay. See if everything fits in there. Okay, so can you read what I'm writing right now? Can you see what I'm writing? Yes. Yes, Richard. Is it yes. yes. Perfect. Then. There is no, there are no problems. So uh, I will also turn off my video because of to save some bandwidth. If I can do that as well. So it's not correct. Okay. So everything seems to be fine. Uh, let's start. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Roth Hurwitz and stability criterion. So let me try to write it down. Hurwitz. Stability criterion. And uh, before I talk about the Rotterdam method, I would just uh, like to make a quick recap of the stability concept itself. Okay. So Okay, so if you consider the uh, standard feedback system where we had the uh, uh, forward gain and the feedback gain over here, we do have the uh, closed loop transfer function as g of s divided by one plus g of s h of s. So you, you already know all of these by heart, I presume. And uh, what we're interested in for stability, maybe I should ask, so what are we interested in? We are interested in the pole locations. And what are the pole locations? Uh, pole locations are the roots of the characteristic polynomial, right? So this is the characteristic polynomial. Polynomial. So if you equate it to zero, then you will have the characteristic equation, right? And what we're interested in is the roots of this characteristic polynomial, and we want them to be on the open left half plane, right? So let me try to plot an S plane. So if you have your S plane like this, so these are the real and imaginary axis so S plane. And we want our roots to be laying on the open left half plane over here. So why do I say open left half plane? Not the left half plane. Because the J omega axis is not included in that region. Okay, so there shouldn't be any roots on the J omega axis. So all the poles should have negative real parts. And that's only possible if all the poles stay in the open left half plane, okay? So if you have a transfer function as an example, let me write, so suppose G closed loop of S, it's easy to check stability. Let's let it be, let's say one over S plus one s plus two and s plus three. And if I just uh, place the pole locations on the s plane, so it will be something like this, that this be minus one, this will be minus two and minus three. 
then I can easily say that, okay, this system is stable because I know the pole locations, exact locations, minus one, minus two, and minus three, and they all lie in the open left top plane. So I'm happy as long as they're here or there, uh, but uh, what will cause problem is if you have poles on the right top plane, right? Then it causes instability. All right, so in such a case, when you have the denominator of your uh, close-up transfer function as uh, factorized as follows, it's easy to inspect if the uh, roots are on the open left half plane, the poles are on the open left half plane or the uh, right half plane, okay? But uh, the, and, and a question rises up, for example, if you have another transfer function, let's say, G closed loop of S is equal to, I don't know, let's say one over S to the power five plus 11 S to the power four minus seven S cubed plus seven S square plus two S minus four, okay. <clears throat> and today's topic is that if we have such a polynomial, how can we know that if the poles are on the left half plane or right half plane, which means that if the system is stable or not, uh, without finding the exact pole locations, without solving the uh, roots of this equation, this polynomial, we would like to inspect if the system is stable or not. Okay, and for this purpose, we're going to use the Roth Herbert stability criterion. Do you have any questions so far? Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, you can write in your chat window so that I can answer uh, by, ins uh, by checking the chat window from time to time, okay? Khan, you have a question, I guess, please do ask. Uh, is having a pole in the origin okay? For no, not really. So uh, it, it, then it's going to be the one over S term, right? And yes. one over S terms integrator, right? And in terms of bounded input, bound to bounded output stability, if you apply a step input, which is a bounded input to an integrator, the integration of a step input is going to be a ramp function, right? And that ramp function is going to be unbounded. Therefore, if you have a pole at the origin, that one of this integrator is going to uh, violate stability. Huh? I see, thank you. So this imaginary axis is indeed not included, okay? Any other questions? If not, let's continue with the Rathervis methods. So I will try to switch the layers if possible. Huh. Okay, I think I did it. At least I hope so. Okay, so in the route ray, uh, we are given a denominator of a transfer function, closed loop transfer function as d of s is equal to a0 s to the power n, a1 s n to the s to the power n minus one, and uh, until the constant term a n over here. And what we would like to do is that we would like to find the roots of this polynomial if they stay in the open left half plane or not, without finding the uh, pole locations so that we can check the stability. Okay, and in the route herbers method, we do that by constructing an array, okay? And we construct the array as follows. So I will start with the highest order term over here and I will write those as s to the power n, s to the power n minus one, s to the power n minus two, power n minus three and go on, okay, up, up to s to the power zero, which is, all right. Then I will try to write down the coefficient so as follows. Uh, I will write the power of s to the power n in the first row over here, a zero, okay. Then I will skip one, uh, this, the, the, the s to the power n minus one terms coefficient, I will skip that one and I will write here a two. Okay, then I will skip again one more and write here a four, okay? And continue like this. 
Then I will go to the second row and I will write the coefficient of s to the power n minus one term, right beneath a zero. So I will write here a one and I will skip one and I will write a three and a five and go on uh, accordingly, okay? Then what I would like to do is that, then I will fill in this table from, so these, the first two rows I fill in from polynomial itself, okay? But uh, the, 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 the remaining rows I will fill in by doing some computations. So let me write here as B1, B2, B3, and C1, C2, C3. And if you, you will continue uh, as well, like the D1, etc., and we're going to compute all these guys. And I will show you how. And the idea is that basically uh, the, the routers method just exploits that the all roots of a, a transfer function is on the open left half plane if a certain algebraic combinations of these coefficients are satisfied, okay? So it satisfies some certain properties. So if a function of these coefficients satisfies certain properties, then you can show that all the rules are on the open left half plane, okay? So let me show you how <coughs> these coefficients are computed. Okay, here are the R coefficients. So let's pick the first one over here. So as I said, the first two row was filled in from the polynomial itself. Now the third row, I'm going to fill it my, my, myself, okay? So let's try to compute this guy, B1, for example. Uh, in order to compute B1, what I do is that I multiply A1 by A2, okay? And subtract A0 times A3, okay? And divide it by A1 over here. So I will, if I can draw it once again like this and divide it by A1. It's just, uh, you can imagine that this is the negative of the determinant of that matrix, okay? Oh, sorry about that. I can end this. Hmm. Uh, it's the uh, negative of, oh, I couldn't get rid of this. Oh, anyhow. Okay, so we do something like this. I have to raise those and fill in those parts. Sorry about that. A2 and A3. Okay. We continue once again. Uh, so, so, as I said, in order to compute B1, I will multiply A1 and A2, subtract A0 times A3 and divide it by A1, okay? And in order to compute B2 over here, I will multiply A1 by A4 and subtract the multiplication of A0 times A5 and divide it by, again, A1, okay? And if I would like to compute B3 over here, I will again construct this, I multiply A1 by A6 over here and A0 by A7 over there and divide it by A1, okay? And if I, so this way I will fill, fill in the third column and I will continue in a similar way, such that if I would like to compute this term over here, okay, now I will have the top two rows uh, ready for me. And in order to compute C1, I will multiply B1 by A3 and subtract the multiplication of A1 times B2 and divide it by B1. So, and if I would like to compute C2, I will might multiply B1 by A5, subtract A1 times B3 and divide it to B1. And if I would like to compute C3, I will multiply B1 by A7, A1 by B5 and so B4 and divide it to B1 over here for C3. 
And similarly, if you would like to compute D1, it will just multiply those two guys, subtract those two and divide it by C1. Okay, so maybe you have the logic of that. Okay. So I will try to solve in, uh, I've tried to fill in such an array. This is called the route array. So let me call this guy as the, sorry about that, route array. So this is the route array, okay. And in order to check the stability, I will check the first column of this route array. Okay, so once I construct this array, I will go to the first column and check those coefficients. All right, so what I will do with this coefficient is simply that. So let me write it down. as a text over here. Okay. So if all elements in the first column of the router are positive, then the system is stable. Okay, so these are one rule. And the second rule is this. And uh, the number of routes with positive real parts is equal to the number of sign chains in the first column of the router. So what we will do is that we're gonna inspect those uh, columns. And if I can write down one example, sorry about that. So suppose you ended up with a right, ended up with a first column, something like that, let's say one, to minus three and four, okay? Suppose these are the coefficients of the first column. What I will inspect is the number of sign chains as follows. So what I will do is that, so this coefficient has the same, uh, same sign with this coefficient, okay? So there is no sign change here. And from when I'm going from two to minus three, there is one sign change, okay? So there's one sign change here. And when I'm going from minus three to four, there's another sign change. So another sign change here, okay. So I will chase these uh, coefficients from top to down and I will check how many times the signs have changed, okay, in order. So for such a case, I have two sign chains and I will conclude that uh, at least two, you know, the two poles have positive real parts, okay? So I will solve one example and try to make it more obvious, okay? So let's do that. By the way, do you have any questions so far? We don't have any questions. Please, who is Şimdi o şu an gözükmüyor. Ne yaptı acaba? Nedir soru söyleyebilir misiniz? What about BN? BN derken? E, o şekilde sormuş. BN. <gülüyor> B'leri hesaplamaları gösterdik zaten burada. En sağdaki B hocam. Ee, orada diğer taraflarda sıfır var zannı sıfır varmış gibi yapabilirsiniz. Onun örneklerini de göstereceğiz. Tamam. Peki teşekkürler. Süper. Hocam. Buyurun. Uh, if one array is in a why do we not uh, why do we calculate other uh, values as well? So uh, what, what did you say? I couldn't understand. Could you repeat uh, please? You, you said that one column is enough to determine if it is stable exactly. or unstable, right? Exactly, the, the, the thing is that in order to compute C1, I need to compute B, B2, okay? In order to compute D, D1, I need to compute C2 as well. So 
So these are required to compute the uh, first column. That's the reason. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So let me solve one example so we can get a, a basic understanding of what's going on here. So let me try to do that. So we'll go one down below. Oh. So in our example, consider the polynomial d of s is equal to s to the power four plus two s cube plus three s square plus four s plus five. And the question is, is the system stable? Okay. Is the system stable? So suppose this is the uh, denominator of a closed transfer function. I would like to figure out if the system is stable or not, okay? And I will do this by construct by applying the Rutherford's method. So I will first try to construct my route tray. And I will start with the highest order term over here. All right, s to the power four, s cube, s square, s to the power one and s to the power zero. And I will write down the coefficients as the, in the first row, I will write down the coefficient of s to the power four, it's equal to one. I will skip one and go to the s squared term and write the coefficient over here. I will skip one and go to the s to the power zero term, which is five, and write it over there, okay? In the second row, I will go to the s cube term, write down the coefficient. I will skip one and go to the S term over there, and write down the coefficient as four, and you can fill in zero here if you would like to. So the first two uh, rows are filled in by using the polynomial itself. The remaining terms I need to compute, okay? And let's do those computations. Suppose, for example, I would like to compute this guy over here. So that guy simply be equal to two times three minus one, times four divided by two, right? So that will be equal to one. So I can write here one. And suppose I would like to compute this guy over there, okay? And in order to compute this, I will multiply those two, subtract those two and divide to this over here, okay? So let me do that. This is equal to two times five minus one times zero divided by two, which is equal to five, okay? So I can write here as five, okay? And you can imagine this is also zero, assuming those guys are also zero over here. Okay, so you can fill in zero if you want, but you won't be needing that because this is going to be like upper triangular matrix uh, array so that the top left parts are going to be filled with numbers, the remaining parts are going to be zero almost, okay? And I will continue computing, let's say the, the, this guy, I will go to the next row, okay? And I compute this and that coefficient is equal to one times four minus two times five divided by one, which is equal to minus six, okay? So let me write here as minus six. And if I compute this guy over here, it's going to be one times zero minus two times zero, which is equal to zero divided by one, which is equal to zero, okay? so. I can write here zero, okay? And let me compute the last term over here, okay? So let's say tilde is equal to minus six times five minus one times zero divided by minus six. That is also equal to five itself, okay? So I'll go here and write here 
five. <clears throat> so by the way, uh, anyways, maybe I can let say to tell that later. So the next thing what I will do for stability, I will check the first column of this array. Okay, so what I will do is to inspect this first column of the router. And I will insp uh, I will chase those coefficients from top to down, and I will inspect the number of sign chains. Okay, so when I'm going one to two, there are no sign chains, but they are both positive numbers. When I'm going two to one, there are no sign chains; there are both positive numbers. When I'm going through one to minus six, there is one sign change here. Okay, from positive to negative, and <clears throat> from minus six to five, there is another sign change here from negative to positive, okay? And I have two sign chains, okay? In the first column. And that means two poles have positive real parts. Okay? And which means that, is the system stable? So system is unstable. Okay. So this is our first and simple example. Do you have any questions? Hocam bir şartımız var mı? Bütün e, A, N, Yeşil e, katsayıları aynı işaretli olmak zorunda gibi. Uh, it doesn't have to be. So the thing is that uh, you can you can conclude the, the stability from there as well. I mean, this, the, these are the algebraic equations in the sense that, for example, these coefficients are going to give you the multiplication of the roots or the sum of the roots, etc. And also, if you say that, for example, if the last term is negative, right, then at least uh, the, the, the what some of the poles should be like, uh, uh, the, the multiplication is positive and negative. So there will be some positive poles over there. And also if their sum is, for example, this, you can compute the summation of these poles by dividing the coefficient of the second term to the coefficient of the first term and put a minus sign over here. And uh, if you end up with a negative number there, which means that the summation of the uh, poles are positive and if the summation of the poles are positive, then at least one pole is positive, then the system is stable. So you can conclude such shortcuts yourself, but this is a more methodic, uh, methodical way to inspect that, okay? So this is another way of inspecting these coefficients and write down the, how many poles have positive real parts. But they all come from these uh, alge the algebraic properties of these polynomial coefficients and the uh, roots, right? So these these are going to give you the if you divide it to the first coefficient and put a minus sign, you get the coefficient, the multiplication, their two by two multiplications, they they are three by three multiplications, etc. Right from these coefficients, and you can inspect all of these and make some conclusions. But the the and the, you will see that if there's a negative sign over here, that will be uh, unstable. But uh, it, during the router, you can also say that how many poles have real parts uh, in the exact number. So uh, therefore we use the router instead. It's like, this is another way of inspecting those coefficients, let's say. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yukarıdaki hocam açıklamada, ikinci açıklamanın sonu uh, root diye bitiyor ya, o sadece bir array var değil mi? Sonunda A root array, exactly. So tamam, here, teşekkür ederim. Thank you. So this is Başka root yok. array. Tamam. Teşekkürler. Any other questions? Hocam sıfırlara nasıl koydunuz? Hani tam kaçırmış oldum da ben. Uh, so you can imagine, so this is also zero, okay? This is also zero. And if you would like to compute this guy over here, for example, this is equal to two times zero minus one times zero divided by, sorry, I, buraya yanlış yazmış oldum. Bu şey, polinomdan yazdığımız coefficientler. Sorry. 
So let's go to the, 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 to the row where we compute these uh, uh, poly, the, the, the coefficients in the route tray. And if you would like to compute this term over here, okay, so you can imagine there are zeros over there, okay, and this is equal to two times zero minus one times zero divided by two, which is equal to zero, okay. Is that all right? Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's continue with another example. So for that example, for that to be quick, I will try to copy if I can, let's see. Try once again. All right, so let's continue with another example. So suppose you have your uh, standard feedback loop over here and G of S is equal to K over S times S plus one, S plus two, and H of S is equal to one. And we would like to find the range of K. Find the range of K for which the system stable. For which the system is stable, okay. So let me first ask, so what is the closed loop transfer function over here? That is equal to G of S divided by one plus G of S, H of S, right? And that will be equal to something like this, right? So it's going to be K over and S times S plus one times S plus two plus K, okay? If you put H of S as one and write this guy in the numerator and denominator, right? And I can write this thing as further as K over S cube plus three S square plus two S plus K, right? And in order to system to be stable, what, what is the condition that needs to be satisfied? So this is the characteristic equation denominator of the closed transfer function roots of this characteristic equation should be on the open left half plane, right? So I will say that, let's say, this is equal to K over D of S. What I will do is to inspect the roots of D of S, okay? And I will do that by using the route heuristic. So let me try to construct the route array. So I will start from the highest order coefficient over here, S cube, and continue with S square, S to the power one, and S to the power zero. And I will write down the coefficients of S cube here first, and then I will skip one and write two over there. You can put a zero if you want for the remaining part. And I will go to the second row right here as three, and skip one and write down K over there. Okay, if you want, you can put here zeros as well. And I will fill in the uh, rest of the route array. Okay, so what is this term? 
So this guy is equal to g times two minus k divided by g, right? So it is simply equal to six minus k divided by g. So let me write that thing down. So this is six minus k divided by g. How about this term? So this is three times zero minus one times zero divided by three. So that is also equal to zero, right? So I can write down over here, zero. Okay. How about uh, this term? That is equal to six minus K divided by three times K minus three times zero divided by six minus K divided by three. Okay. And what is this guy equal to? So this is zero, this cancels, and what is remaining is k itself, right? So let me write down k here. All right. So I would like to ask you now, so what is the condition that needs to be satisfied for the system to be stable? I will inspect the first column of the raw tray, right? So I will inspect this guy over here. And what is the condition on this first column? All must be greater than zero. Exactly, all must be greater than zero, okay? And for that thing, I need to satisfy these conditions. First of all, six minus K divided by three should be greater than zero. And K should be greater than zero, right? And if you combine those three, so this is greater than zero if k is less than six, right? And k should be greater than zero. Then these, both of these conditions are satisfied if k is between zero and six. Okay. So if k is between zero and six, then the system is stable. In other combinations, there will be sign chains and system will be unstable, okay? Do you have any questions? Sign change will be stable will do, do no, not there's no, If there's a sign change, there's a, uh, at least one pole with positive real parts, then the system is unstable. Mm -hmm. So if all elements in the first column of the right area are positive, then the system is stable, okay? Good. John, uh, may hmm. I ask something? Uh, yes, if, please. What if there is a zero on the column? Exactly, we will come to those uh, parts immediately. So these are called the difficulties in the right tray, and we do have uh, solutions for that, okay? Okay, so thanks. let me write that thing down. Thanks for asking, which is the, exactly what I was going to tell next. So there are some difficulties that can be encountered uh, while calculating the route tray, okay? So there, so let me write it down blue. There can be difficulties. Yes when constructing a route array, okay. And the first difficulty that we will mention is that uh, I will write down as difficulty, maybe I can write it with the text that will be easier. So the difficulty one, so I will try to insert the text box over here. So like uh, difficulty. Okay. 
So when the first term, term in any row is zero, why well, there's at least one non-zero term in the other columns, okay? So that's the first type of difficulty. And the second type of difficulty is that if you have a zero row in the route tray, I will come to that later, okay? So there will be a second difficulty, which I will mention later, but let's first on the, let's first focus on the first difficulty. And I will show an example for that. And I should also uh, add that if you encounter any difficulties, then the system is unstable, okay? So let me write that thing down as well. So if you encounter one of the difficulties, then the system is unstable, okay? And I would like to show you an example of the first difficulty and the, our solution. So let's consider this example that the polynomial that we are interested in is s cube minus 3s plus 2. Okay. And let me try to construct a raw tray. So I will start from the highest order term s cube over here, and I will write s square, s to the power 1, and s to the power 0. Go like this. And uh, I will write down the coefficient of s cube is equal to one, s cube one, and write down the coefficient of s term is equal to minus three. And uh, what is the coefficient of the s square term over here? It is zero, right? Because it doesn't exist over there. So this coefficient must be equal to zero. And what is the coefficient of s to the power zero term? That is two right here, okay? And uh, if I would like to compute, for example, this term, as we did in the previous cases, I will multiply zero by minus three, subtract one, two, and divide by zero. And I will have a divide by zero error there, right? So therefore I cannot do that division. And that cast the first difficulty that we mentioned in the route tray. And there are multiple solutions to deal with that. And I will show you only one of them today. So it's going to be solution. So replace the zero element, replace the zero term with some small positive number epsilon, okay? So let me do that. So maybe I can overwrite that might be better. So I will replace that zero term with epsilon, okay? And assume that epsilon is a small positive number and proceed, okay? So what I will do next is to compute this guy. By the way, I will later mention that you can select this epsilon to be positive or uh, negative. That shouldn't change. that will not change the result at the end. But let's assume for the timing it's positive, okay? And this term is going to be equal to then minus three epsilon minus two divided by epsilon itself, okay? And I can continue writing down here as zero. And how about uh, this term over here? What is this term? Maybe from the previous examples that you can see a pattern such that uh, if I would like to compute uh, this term over here, I will uh, multiply those two and subtract those two Okay, and divide it by to this value over here. And because of that zero, okay, so I will multiply those two and divide it by this term. So that two comes directly to here, okay. So this will be equal to two, right? I can write it down. Okay. So I didn't write this uh, term over here. Uh, but 
This is equal to minus three, or maybe I can write one step further. This is equal to minus three. Minus two over epsilon, okay. And I will inspect the first column over here, okay. Okay and the number of sign changes. So I let's say that I assume that for the time being assumed to be a very small positive number, okay? Let me, let's assume epsilon to be a very small positive number to, the, to replace the zero term over here. And then from one to epsilon, they are both positive, there are no sign changes, okay? But if epsilon is positive, what about the next term over here? What is the sign of this term? If epsilon is positive, the second term is negative, this term is negative, summation of two terms is negative. So that will be a sign change over here, okay? So this term ends up to be negative, therefore it's going to be a sign change, okay? And from that negative number to plus two, there will be another sign change, okay? And then I will conclude that there are two sign chains And which means that two roots have positive real parts. And if this is the denominator of a class closed of transfer function, then the system is unstable. Okay. So this is this was the case when I assumed epsilon to be positive. Okay. So a very small positive number. But you, so you can also put a very small negative number and do the calculations. And you will see that you will again end up with two, uh, two sign chains. So that's not going to change your result. So for simplicity, you can assume that uh, for the time being a positive uh, number there. By the way, uh, I should mention once again, if you encounter one of the difficulties, the system is, you can immediately conclude that the system is unstable, okay? So we compute this, we replace this epsilon and carry out these calculations just to find the, how many roots have positive field parts, not to answer the question to the stability, okay? Because once we end up with a zero term over here, we can immediately conclude that the system is unstable. We carry out these computations just to find how many poles have positive field parts. So this is the first difficulty. And the second difficulty I will mention, but I will not talk about that today because, so let me write down the second difficulty and then I will get your questions. John, One second. Uh, uh, so I'll write down the second difficulty and get your questions, okay? So, the, So the worst thing is going to be the case where this two is also equal to zero, okay? So we have a zero row in the route array. Then we need to do something else and I will talk about that in our next lecture. So I can uh, get your questions, yes, please. Uh, you said before there are two uh, different solution for difficulty one. Uh, what is the second solution? Uh, I, 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 we will skip that. So there are, there are many ways, there are three other ways, uh, there are three ways of uh, dealing with these uh, difficulties. So we will save only one for the time being, okay? Okay, thank you. There are other tricks that you can deal with, but this is one of the easiest one, the, the most straightforward one. Any other questions? Hocam şey, e, şu right hand plane'de mesela şeyimiz olsa, e, pole'umuz olsa ve aynı yerde de zero olsa, cancel'lasa ama gene pole olduğu için şey oluyor mu? Ee, orada zaten pole'u cancellation'ı yaptıktan sonraki denominator'ı düşünüyorsunuz yani. Hmm. Maybe I should also mention that. So for example, you don't have to, so this technique is about polynomials, right? 
So it doesn't have to be the denominator of a closed transfer function itself. So for example, in this example, we only inspected the roots of this polynomial, right? And uh, we said that, okay, two roots have positive real parts. And I didn't say anything about uh, stability, etc. And I later I added that, okay, if this was the denominator of the uh, closed transfer function, and if there's no positive cancellations as well, then you can conclude that the system is unstable, right? So you can assume that you made those cancellations already and then end up with the uh, numerator divided by denominator and you inspect the, that terms over there. Thanks. You're welcome. Because if there's, if something remains on the right half plane, then the system becomes unstable. I can also show you that that cases from the from my web page as well. So, if you go to the teaching and go to three hundred two course, there are some notes that I prepared for the time domain analysis. For example, when you have a transfer function with negative poles, you have these uh, nice step responses. But if you have a, a pole on the right half plane. And you have unbounded responses. You can see those. And also you can see that, maybe I can show it over here. So if you inspect, we will come to this thing when we are talking about root locus later on, but for the time being, let's focus on that. So below you, the, the crosses shows the closed loop pole locations, okay? And uh, on top of that, I plot the step response, for example, right now, Currently, all poles are on the left half plane and the step response is a nice under damp response. But if the poles are on the right half plane like this, then you have like increased oscillations that the system becomes unstable, okay? So we, do, we have to make sure that we don't have any poles on the right half plane or the imaginary axis uh, for stability. Okay, so that's all what I, uh, I'm going to talk about today. Do you have any yeah. questions? If not, we can continue with our, in our Dan, next lecture. Yes, please. Um, can you repeat the part uh, about epsilon minus k? Uh, you, you can do it yourself. So you instead of, uh, I assume that there, this epsilon was a positive, very small positive number, okay? So as an exercise, please assume that epsilon is a very small negative number, okay? And you will see that again, there will be two sign changes. It's not going to change the result. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good. Uh, any other questions? If not, so tomorrow I won't be able to uh, hold an synchronous lecture because of the whole day. So I will record some lectures and upload it. And maybe I can stop the uh, recording here as well. And I will also try to okay. Uh, and I will also try to uh, upload the link of this uh, lecture on to the of the class as well once the recording is ready at the cloud. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, and see you next time then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.